Well, they, they, when they say they've given them the money, the only money that has been spent on players at Manchester United is the money the club has generated or that it's borrowed. It does not come from the families. Let's get this out of our heads, that the Glazer family are putting money in every year, like Roman Abramovich did, like the Saudi Arabians are doing at Newcastle, like Sheikh Mansour's done at Manchester City. They're hand in the pocket, spending on players. They've not done that. They've borrowed and they've used the revenue that the club generates through its incredible fan base and a great commercial operation. Gary Neville, over the last couple of months, has been very vocal against the Glazers. I've been vocal against the Glazers for years and years and years, just as you have been. But now more than ever, feels like a time where Manchester United fans, we've got an opportunity here. I think things are starting to align. It feels right now that there's more momentum and genuine optimism for thinking that the Glazers might sell. And what I want to do in this video is follow up on that, on those comments on that video there with Gary Neville, with this fantastic thread from Swiss Ramble on Twitter, because it really will help you understand the numbers and the facts behind the Glazers and really justify everything that all United fans have been saying. This is the video you need to share among United fans. If they don't truly understand what it is the Glazers have done, show them this video. Show them these numbers. It lays it all out in front of you in a really simple way. So please watch it. Please share it. And please listen. Because it's time that we have to get rid of these fucking leeches from our club. If we are ever going to compete in the Premier League again, they have to go. So fan, I want to say a big shout out to Swiss Ramble for doing this because there's a, there's a lot of complicated figures and to really get your head around is quite difficult. I'll do my best to present his work and I've left the link to the full thread in the description. But let's start diving into the numbers. And of course, the dividends have been a massive, massive sticking point every single year. Despite the fact that we're making losses, despite the fact that we're abysmal as a football club on the pitch, the Glazers have continued to take dividends. And since 2016, they've taken out over £160 million, averaging £22 million per year. No other Premier League club owners take dividends out of the club. It's just Manchester United at a time where we're haggling over transfer fees. They're taking money out of the club. Point number one of them taking money out of the club. And there are plenty more of them that I will explain in this video. Swiss Ramble here is saying, although it has fallen from its peak, a £21 million interest payment in 2020 or 2021 was still the highest in the Premier League. And the United have now paid out £743 million in interest repayments since the Glazers took over our club back in 2005. £743 million. Here you can see all the payments. You remember that in 2010, this was the green and gold protest. That was when the loans, I think, got reissued as bonds. And you look at what United got slapped with. These numbers are astronomical. And it's not just about the dividends. It's not just about the interest payments. There's so much more to this. And that's why this video is so, so important for all United fans, I think, to watch. Uh, Swiss Rumble goes on focusing on the last 12 years. £517 million in interest repayment is nearly three times as much as the highest Premier League club. And Arsenal have got that debt because they got a new stadium. It's staggering that, that this, this debt has been, the, has been a straitjacket for ambition and success. Fergie was the genius that managed to navigate all of it. But that was Fergie. This is now. And it's just not possible for success to be sustained when the model is so crippled by debt, interest and dividends. And more than that, Man United have also had to pay £150 million on loan repayments, which would have been even higher without the new debt that's since the COVID struck. And only Arsenal paid more. And as I said, that was to fund the Emirates. And when you go over here, this is probably, if, if I'm being honest... I think this is the most sickening thing about all of it to do with the Glazers. Even after all the refinancing, Manchester United's nearly £600 million gross debt is virtually unchanged since the Glazers arrived. And that's despite us spending £743 million on interest repayments, or nearly £150 million on net loan repayments. Our debt remains pretty much the same. And you can see that here. That's from 2006 on the left-hand side all the way through to 2021-2 on the right-hand side and the latest quarterly results. Look at it. Spurs are up there because of their stadium. 
Chelsea were up there because of Roman Abramovich, and that's now been completely written off because they got Todd Bowley in. So that, that doesn't exist. The only team who has more debt than us is Tottenham Hotspur, who took out like an £800 million mortgage to pay for a new stadium. It's mind blowing. And as I said, there's more, there's so much more to this video. Don't turn off yet because the numbers just keep getting worse. And this is laying it all on the table because it has to be. As I say, it feels like there's genuine energy behind the Glazers and getting them out of the club at the moment. But also at the same time, there's also coming at it from their angle. There's reasons why them selling now would also suit them. And that's what I want to explain in this video. You go down here, you look at the capital expenditure. That's how much has been put into Old Trafford and, and put into maintaining the stadium. Look at that, man. Spurs, of course, new stadium. But Fulham are above us. Fulham. Brighton are nearly the same as us. It's embarrassing how little we put into what was the greatest UK stadium. Now a, now a dilapidated history museum. I don't know what to call it, but it's not what it was. It really wasn't. And of course, anybody who's going to join in this video that doesn't really truly understand the Glazers, if you're a rival fan, ah, oh, Sam, uh, the Glazers have spent an absolute shit ton of money, man. What are you moaning about? Look how much they have spent. And we've spent a lot of money. And we've also had Ed Woodward being in charge of that money. We may as well have had no money. The amount of money we've wasted has been truly insane. But this is not the Glazers' money. And this is the point that Gary Neville was making at the start of this video that I want to double down on and really give you the numbers behind it. Because in the last 10 years, no owners in the Premier League have taken out more money than the Glazers have done. And if we have a look at here, and this is the, uh, in terms of the owner funding, how much have the Glazers put in? It's all in negative. From 2012 right the way through to 2021. And we go up here and we see how much Man City owners spent. Nearly 700 million they put into it. Chelsea, 500. Villa, over 500. Fulham, over 400. Man United, 154 million has been taken out by the owners. They've not put a fucking penny into the club. And that is the, that is the, the, the core of the frustration of the United fans. And completely justified. You can say whatever you want about how much money we've spent at the club and we've spent it poorly. I don't, I don't deny that whatsoever. But to say that the Glazers have put money into the club is such a goddamn lie. And that's what these numbers show and prove. And need that this, these, these, this sort of misinformation has to be stopped. And that's the purpose of this video. Purely informative, speaking about facts, and exposing it for what it truly is. And why United fans have every reason to be as pissed off as we do, man. And we go over here and we can talk about the wages, of course. Manchester United's wages. It's the disparity of it all. Our wages are the highest in the Premier League. It's absolutely bonkers. And if you talk about how Manchester United have been acting in this summer's transfer window, we've been acting like we've got no money. But according to the latest uh, financial results, only Spurs... Have more than Manchester. Have more than Manchester United in terms of cash in the bank. The cash is there. We're not spending it. But this, of course, is a massive thing. How bad Manchester United have been at player sales. I think Dan James was one of the only players we've actually sold for a profit in the last few years, and it's insane. But this part here is so important, and this for me is why I think there's more energy behind the Glazers and getting the Glazers out of the club than there ever has been before. Because all this fan discontent is coming from one angle. And that's the angle of the fans wanting the Glazers out of the club. Which, to this point, hasn't been able to shift them. Coming from the angle of the Glazers, and I'm trying to put my selfish business hat on here. From a business perspective, the Glazers have reached a crossroads where they can't just use the legacy of our previous success as a cash cow anymore. Now, let me explain that part. Manchester United, look, under the Glazers, there's no doubt that our revenue shot up. From 2012, the whole way up to 2019, it doubled. But look at what's happened here. You can see that the growth is turning into negative. And the more you dive into these figures, the more you realise that is the case. Because look at Manchester United's revenue now compared to our... Obviously, that's the, was that the previous... Is this the last full year of accounts, I think, that we have? City are above us. Liverpool... They've caught up with us. Chelsea, it won't be long before they overtake us. And Spurs, at some point, they'll come above us as well. 
this is the big this is the clincher for me and why i've really excited is the wrong word but why i think there's more momentum behind this current iteration against the glazers than i think there ever has been before because their model works previously but their model does not work anymore look at the stagnation of the commercial revenue of manchester united between 2016 and 2021 as i said before edward would hailed as the genius look when you go from 2020 12 2012 sorry down there the whole way up there huge growth pure and utter stagnation obviously covid loss no, i'm not going to say that was because of anything but Man United's business model has changed. Man United are now declining as, a, as an asset. It means that Manchester United, as it stands, will not gain any more value than we currently have. And the Glazers are at a crossroads where they either invest in Manchester United, get us back up to where we need to be, and the value of the brand and the asset, I'm speaking in purely commercial terms, it's not what I fucking think, but I'm just saying it for the purpose of this video, people. Don't have a go at me for that, please. They either invest heavily or they cash out. And I can't see them investing heavily. That's why I've got, I don't know, I've just got, a, I've got a different feeling about what's going on at the moment than what's happened previously. That's why I think so anyway. This is something I didn't actually realise or didn't particularly consider. Swiss Ramble here saying it's possible the Glazers have also been quietly picking up director's fees. Of course, there's 12 directors at Manchester United, of which six of them are the Glazers. And if we're going to do an assumption here, uh, this is what every single year on the uh, profit and loss accounts there's the director's remunerations which are put down there and this is what the figures are every year and if you can safely assume that half of it is going to the glazers it means they've actually siphoned out another 55 million pounds from the club since 2010 all quietly all quietly done and also before 2010 uh, manchester united also paid the glazers various management fees which added up to 23 million pounds so when you add that 23 million pounds with those director's fees of 55, with the 743 for the debt, uh, with the 150 in the loan repayments, and they start stacking up and up and up. It's over a billion we're at, at the moment, but we're not stopping just there because the Glazers have converted so, quite a, so many of their shares over the last few years and sold them off for just shy, in total, of 500 million pounds. So that's them selling off part of, of Manchester United and taking their money out. Not giving those voting rights out because they convert them to A shares away from B shares before they've put them on the open market. And none of that has come back to Manchester United. That's nearly 500 million pounds. And when you add all these numbers together, you get to the final figure. 1.1 billion has left Manchester United on interest repayments, debt repayments, dividends, directors' remunerations, and management fees. And if you include those shares that were sold, it brings a grand total of £1.6 billion that has left Manchester United at the same time. Now, let me get these figures up here for comparison. £1.6 billion that has left the club at the same time as Man City and their owners have put £700 million into the club. Chelsea, £500 million. Villa, £500 million. Fulham 450, Everton 440, Leicester 330. The list goes on. The Glazers have never put a single penny of their own money into Manchester United. Any money that's ever been spent at the club has been as a consequence of the club's revenues. So I'm, it has to be put to bed. This idea that the Glazers have spent money, they've never spent a thing. This has been their ambition or their lack of ambition and their draining of the resources of the club has reached a crescendo at this point in time. And it's mobilized the best protests and the most consistent protests we've seen against the ownership. But now that the, that the commercial model has stagnated at Manchester United, the Glazers really have to consider selling because it's not just about us trying to force them out anymore. It's about them wanting the most of the value of their asset. And I don't think it's going to get any better than what it is at the moment. In fact, I think it's going to go down. And therefore, I think the Glazers will be considering selling. As I said, this video, I hope it's not that boring for you. I mean, it's not that boring. It's just the truth. But big thank you very I want to say one more time, thank you to Swiss Ramble for putting these numbers and creating these graphs and these charts because it's very hard to understand. But he's made it as simple as possible. And I hope that I've done it justice in this video. So please, if you would, 
Share this video around with Reds. Share it with other United fans. Empower other United fans to understand the true scale of what the Glazers have done. Because until we do that, until every fan really is on the same wavelength, the Glazers are winning a little bit. We have to unify as a fan base. And, and these facts and figures, I think, will help. And show it to other fans as well. Because I'm bored. I'm sick to the back teeth of having to justify this to non-United fans. I don't want to do it anymore. But look, if you did not enjoy the video, but it did help, please consider dropping a like on it. Subscribe if you're new, because I will continue fighting against the Glazers until they do not own our club anymore. I can promise that.